The iPad Pro is more iPad than ever according to Apple, but is that really a good thing? Let me tell you why I think you should definitely give the iPad Pro a miss. Let's start with the cost, let's get that out of the way first. This starts at £679, which is $799 for the 32GB Wi-Fi model, and rises to a whopping £899 or $1079 for the 128GB Wi-Fi Plus cell option. We're talking about high-end laptop or ultrabook money here, and many people are actually considering the iPad Pro as a potential laptop replacement, so let's talk about that. You could get an 11-inch MacBook Air for the price of the base iPad Pro plus the Apple Pencil. For 50 quid more than the top-end iPad Pro model, you could get the new Dell XPS 13 Ultrabook. For 50 quid less, you can even buy the Microsoft Surface Pro 4. It's not just about the price though, all these alternatives offer full proper operating systems, whether it's a Mac OS or Windows. These will come with desktop programs as well, not the cut down basic mobile apps. They also offer a much greater range of connections and ports from card readers and HDMI to USB 3 and even USB Type-C ports. So you can buy a separate keyboard accessory to make the iPad Pro more productive and maybe add an Apple Pencil to allow you to be more creative. But while mobile apps are getting better and offering more features, when you need to get proper work done, you'll always turn back to a proper laptop or desktop computer. So bearing in mind mobile versus desktop apps, the range of ports available, and the similarly priced competition, the iPad Pro simply cannot replace a laptop. So if it's not a proper ultra portable laptop, then maybe we should think of it as a giant tablet. Many of us are used to the super thin lightweight iPad Air or Android equivalents like the Samsung Galaxy S2 or the uh, Sony Xperia Z4 tablets. The iPad Pro weighs 713 grams, that's 1.57 pounds. That's a lot heavier than the 437 grams of the iPad Air 2. Of course, you are getting pretty much two iPad Air displays in one device with the Pro, along with more powerful hardware and better speakers. While the A9X chip and 4GB of RAM do make this the most powerful iPad you can buy, it doesn't really do anything the Air 2 can't. The Air 2 has the same split view multitasking feature, which is a selling point for the Pro, and the A9X won't even make much of a difference in performance as part of the reason it does need to be more powerful in the, in the iPad Pro is to push the higher resolution display and even though it is high res due to the increased screen size it ends up having the same 264 pixel, pixels per inch density as the iPad Air. So the Pro is essentially just a larger and therefore less portable iPad Air 2 with better speakers uh, and the option to use a $99 Apple Pencil. Maybe I'm being unfair comparing the Pro to a normal laptop or normal tablet. Maybe we should think of it as a whole new category of device. Big phones are described as phablets, maybe the iPad Pro should be a sort of tablet-laptop hybrid, a tap-top perhaps, but then ask yourself, do you need or even want another in-between device? If you're into your Apple products, for example, you may already have a 4.7-inch iPhone, perhaps a 9.7-inch iPad, and maybe a 13 or 15-inch MacBook Air or Pro. Do you need a 12.9-inch in-between tab-top device that costs you around £700 or $800? It may seem nice to have and use, and it has a great display and obviously really fantastic speakers, but the chances are you only have a range of fantastic devices that aren't too dissimilar in size and offer similar, if not the same, features. Of course, it is a luxury device. It's a want rather than a need. You can look at it in one of two ways. Either the best of both worlds, combining the multitasking productivity of a laptop with the portability and simplicity of a tablet, or it's the worst of both worlds, compromising on functionality compared to a laptop by running mobile apps and the mobile iOS operating system, as well as being too big and too heavy to comfortably use while traveling or commuting like a tablet. Annoyingly though, while I don't know why I necessarily need an iPad Pro, I must admit using it, it is actually quite nice. You should hopefully go and try one, although I can't really rationalize myself buying one personally. Let me know what you think. Do you think there's room for an iPad Pro in your life? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Please do like and subscribe, and I'll catch you again on the Tech Channel.